Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C Raptor, and today we are continuing our Learn to Play the German Cruiser Line series with Tier 7's York. Now, the format of this video is going to be a little different from the ones that, that you've seen for, for Tier 6 and the ones you'll see at Tier 8 and Tier 10, because those were basically done live on stream. I'm able to do a little more traditional uh, video here doing the ones for York and Rune. And it's, it's fortuitous that it's working out this way, because in my opinion, York is like an incredibly important cruiser to understand as you move up the line, and Rune is unique enough that we're going to have to spend quite a bit of time kind of talking through that ship when we get there. So let's talk about York, and before we get too far, let's talk about the differences between light cruisers and heavy cruisers, both historically and in World of Warships. A light cruiser, technically, officially, under the terms of one of the 1930s naval treaties, is defined as a, a ship with six inch smaller, six inch or smaller guns of a certain tonnage. Okay. So cruisers, cruisers were given like a tonnage range, you know, anything it's like 10,000 tons or, you know, between three and 10,000 tons or something like this. And then it was six inch guns or smaller is considered a light cruiser. Um, and then anything above that technically considered a heavy cruiser. Most nations settled on eight inch guns, 203 millimeter guns for their heavy cruisers. Light, like again, like you said, uh, light cruisers six inches and below, 152 millimeter guns or below. Technically, a 155 Mogami of the Japanese Navy was also considered a light cruiser. She, her guns were 155 millimeters, so it's like 6.1 inches or something. Close enough, right? So, in World of Warships, what this means is that most, like, if you play a light cruiser, like the British light cruisers, for example, are an easy example. The, the you know, Carnegieburg, Nuremberg, the American light cruisers, Wooster, Cleveland, um, Seattle. All of these ships are highly effective at hunting things smaller than them. They can they can stand up against heavy cruisers for a time. They pretty much cannot deal with battleships. A battleship will penetrate generally full penetrate or overpen uh, a light cruiser from almost any angle it fires at, and even tiered. Uh, an even-tiered battleship should be able to just crush an opposing light cruiser. Heavy cruisers, though, the, 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 rules, the rules change a little bit. Things get a little different. And in World of Warships, it all comes down to armor scheme and overmatch. When you're talking about overmatch in World of Warships, it's important to understand how armor works. I'm going to put a link down below in the description of this video. Which, if you're going to start playing heavy cruisers, it's really, it's critically important that you understand what you can and cannot bounce in terms of battleship caliber shells for a given ship that you're driving. For example, York here has a 25 millimeter bow, okay? That means any battleship that she faces with 14 inch guns or smaller, and I say smaller because she could be up against a Giulio, uh, Giulio Cesare, for example, which is smaller than 14 inches, um... They cannot overmatch her bow and citadel the ship through the bow. Okay, when I say overmatch, I mean those shells would treat this plating like it didn't even exist. Okay, so 14, inch in, 14 inches and below, York can basically go bow onto a battleship, and she will still take damage, but they cannot absolutely just crush her through the bow and do horrible things. Okay, however... There's a lot of 15-inch and up battleships in her matchmaking. For example, Gneisenau, now, 15 inches, right? Um, Prince Heinrich, the new German tier 7, 15 inches. And she will see tier 9, so she will see Musashi, which will slaps this ship silly, and so on. It doesn't matter what angle you show a Musashi or an Iowa, those 16-inch guns will do nasty things to your armor scheme. Okay? So as we talk, as we move, so as we move up the line, we're gonna hear me talk about bow plating, and that's why it's important. It's important to understand what you can and can't sort of uh, handle that firing at your bow. So for York, it's going to be 14 inch shells and below. She can reliably handle those. She will not take zero damage, but she will not take generally not take catastrophic damage through the bow when dealing with, with, you know, say an Arizona or New Mexico. Okay. Um, the other thing is uh, gun caliber. We talked about this briefly. Okay. Light cruisers, like we talked to, you know, Nuremberg had an incredibly fast rate of fire. York's rate of fire is literally double that of Nuremberg's. Okay, so it's much more important that you are considering the next the next salvo you want to take, the ammo type you want to have loaded. You got to do a little planning ahead, okay, and then um, uh, where are you firing? Right, you got to be lining up on your target. Now the last part is true of anybody, but in heavy cruisers it becomes a little more important just because you've got to be thinking ahead. Heavy cruiser is a really nice place to kind of train yourself to learn that thinking ahead part of battleship right? Because I don't have to wait 30 seconds between salvos 
but I do have to be at least planning a salvo or two ahead. You know, if this guy's going to get a salvo of HE, another of HE, then I'll switch to the AP and start beating up on this guy. Or if this guy's going to keep that angle, I'll start throwing AP into him or whatever, okay? So, York here on a 12-second reload, literally twice that of Nuremberg. But the shells, my friends, the shells hit significantly harder. Now, I'm going to talk about York because she stands out in the, in the German line. She is, these guns are the only place you find these 210 millimeter guns in the entire German line. These are, as I recall, loosely based around a World War I uh, naval artillery piece. And uh, for a long time, these shells were really, really questionable. They were very slow to use, very difficult to use. They were very slow. Um, Wargaming has made a lot of really nice quality of life changes over the years for York. This is a very comfortable ship to play these days, okay? She has a lot of range. You see there, over 17 kilometers at tier 7. That's really nice. The shell velocities are a little on the slow side compared to, say, maybe like, you know, Hipper, Rune, and Hindenburg, but they're still very usable, and the AP has been buffed to the point that it is usable at medium and long range. There was a time York's AP was garbage past about 10 kilometers, those days are over. So if you remember old York for many years, she had that problem. That problem has been buffed away. York basically plays like a smaller, less armored, more maneuverable hipper these days. So let's take a quick spin around the ship. We've got 210 millimeter, 210, uh, millimeter main battery guns, obviously, firing every 12 seconds. Your primary targets as a heavy cruiser, you're going to be hunting opposing cruisers, light cruisers, and you're going to be harassing battleships at every opportunity, particularly with fires. You will occasionally take shots at destroyers. I always encourage cruiser players, light or heavy, to shoot at a destroyer anytime it's spotted. However, heavy cruisers, as a rule, generally pushing up to actively hunt a destroyer, not really the role that you're built for, okay? It's just not what you do well. You can do it in a pinch. You're still a cruiser, especially a cruiser like this with that five and a half kilometer German Hydra. We'll get to that in a minute, but um, but yeah, you gotta be really careful about that. So, you know, know when to, you, gotta, you gotta learn when to do it and when not to do it. Um, many of the German sec cruisers, as you move the line, will start to have really good secondary armament. York here, not so much. These, these, you know, these go out to 6.6 .6 kilometers. They have a little bit of pin in them. If you find yourself in a, in a bit of a brawl with a, with a cruiser or an opposing destroyer, you might land a few meaningful secondary hits, but they're not going to substantially contribute to your DPS. So don't spend any time or points. Don't invest anything in her secondary battery. It's just not worth it. Okay. 32,000 hit points means that York is maybe a little on the low side for a tier 7 heavy cruiser, but she's, this is still a very respectable health pool. Miyoko, last I checked, was still the king at this, uh, almost 40,000 hit points at tier 7, which is just insane. There's a reason that ship is so good, but York can absolutely hang hang with these ships because of how maneuverable she is, and we'll talk about that in a minute, okay? You do have a little bit of torpedo protection. Don't take torpedoes. Just, just don't take torpedoes. It's a bad idea. We talked about her armor layout, specifically her bow armor. Let's talk about the rest of it, okay? She does have 80 millimeters of belt armor. What does this mean? Broadside battleships will slap this thing silly. Like, that's just welcome to the life of a cruiser, okay? Nothing, that's not ever going to change. Get used to it. However, she does have a little bit of this turtle back in here, and you'll hear me talk about this as we keep going on up the line. Let me try and hide things so you can see it. What do I mean when I'm talking about a turtle back? You see how her angle, she's got this angled plate in here. Let me put her citadel back in. So her citadel sits here, right? Her citadel is actually fairly well protected. Um, it sits relatively low in the water, but you see that angled slope to it? That makes it so that when she is at close range, shells coming in on a flat arc, right? People shooting at her at close range will 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 struggle to penetrate this because this angled plate means they're going to want to ricochet. They're going to want to bounce off this sloped deck. So when you see a ship with a turtle back armor scheme, it gives them a bit of a leg up in a brawling uh, scenario. York is, uh, hang on, wrong button. York is more than able to brawl because of her torpedo armament. She has two triples on each side. These are the same torpedoes you had on Nuremberg. Um, so this is no change here. But the difference is, is that York's armor scheme and health pool mean she's going to have an easier time potentially delivering these torpedoes. Now, you're not going to be able to run across 15 kilometers of open water to torpedo a battleship. They're going to kill you probably along the way, him and his teammates. But if you're coming around a corner, if you're in a, you know the right position, chances are you can, you know, if you, they've only got a couple of minutes, a minute or two, uh, to, to fire you, chances are you can survive to deliver those torpedoes. So she's got that knockout punch going for her, along with her heavy cruiser armor scheme, okay? York's A defense is not too bad. It's not amazing. 
She's only got five flak puffs out to 5.2 kilometers. The German, the German heavy cruisers are hard capped at 5.2 kilometers um, aerial range because, well, Wargaming hates them. There's not really a, a reason for this. It just is so. Um, I will still generally build, and you'll see this when I talk about my hipper video, uh, I still build the high tier ones for AA almost exclusively. York is kind of this middle ground. York can go either way. I have my York here actually playing. Um, I, I equip Hydro instead of Defensive Fire. We'll look at that in a minute. But um, you can invest some points into her AA. You will get a return on them. She will see a large number of tier six crew, uh, tier six carriers, and her AA will will do some will do some work there. Um, against tier eight planes, things start to struggle a bit, unless you're talking about you know Enterprise and Kaga, which are have have kind of squishier planes, right? Um, so yeah, the AA is not bad. The long range AA aura you see there. Uh, 96, not too shabby. The mid-range aura is where you wish it was better, right? She's got a couple of these, she's got some of these single 40 millimeter guns floating around, but the German mid-range AA doesn't really start to pick up until hip or so. There's not, a, like, the AA is not one of her strong suits, but it's, it's okay. It's satisfactory for, like, a, a, a tier 7 heavy cruiser. I'm going to talk about concealment before I talk about maneuverability, because this is another key, key, key important thing you have to understand as you move from Nuremberg up to York. You are more detectable, and you always will be, period. Nuremberg, I think, caps out around 10 and a half or 11 kilometers. York is even more detectable than that here at 12, and 12 is about where you're going to live, right? I think you can get a hipper down to like 11 and a half, something like that, but the bottom line is you are not stealthy in this ship, okay? You are not built to be stealthy. You will never be stealthy, not with these guns in this health pool and all these other tools you have at your disposal. Stealth would just be insane. Okay, so Wargaming has tried to balance the ship a bit by making her a little more detectable than many of her contemporaries. Not all of them, but many of them, okay? So 12-kilometer detection means that you have to be very cautious with the ship early in a match. I'm going to say this here. I'm going to say it again later during the replay. I'm going to say it over and over and over and over because it's one of the most important things you need to learn when playing a German cruiser line, or playing the, any of the ships in the German cruiser line. Your impact comes in the back half of a match, Okay? You need to push up slow at the beginning, look for targets of opportunity, be looking for a place that you can push up and be a little more aggressive, but that opportunity will likely not come until the 7, 8, 10 minute mark of a game. Okay, It takes time for opposing ships to pick a position, start to thin out a bit, then you can be a little aggressive. Being aggressive before that, particularly with, these, with, with, with York and Hipper, will just get you dead. You'll just die. So... You've got to play very cautiously, very conservatively, at least for the first, probably, I'm going to say at least minimum five to seven minutes of a match, especially in randoms. Like, just, you just do not want to be pushing up. You want to play it, you know, 12 to 15 kilometers. You want to back up somebody. You want to throw HE. You want to light fires and so on. And part of that you have to learn is to manage this detection, right? You've always got to deal with this. You, like, one of the worst things you can do, is, especially in a German heavy, is to be the first ship spotted by the enemy team because... You have a large detection radius, and your armor scheme is built for getting in close. It's built for brawling. So what that means is, is that if enemies that take long-range fire at you and plunge shells down through the roof of your deck, through, through, the, through the top of the ship, like at 17, 18 kilometers, they will citadel you reliably at that range if they can land those shells, okay? So don't get spotted early, right? And if you do, you know, don't, don't take stupid pot shots early. I mean, look for shots, but like, don't, if you don't think you can get something out of it, don't take it. You have to hold fire sometimes to avoid getting, you know, re return fire coming in because of your armor scheme. Your armor scheme works against you at long range. As you move closer, it becomes a great asset. So early in a match, you got to play very conservatively. The other thing is we're going to talk about highlight here in this section is the speed. I'm running a speed flag. I've got my Sierra mic on right here. Okay. Um, that gives me 33.6 knots. There's a lot of cruisers that are way faster than this, okay? And this is something you're going to see as you continue up the line. The German heavies are not fast ships. They're not really meant to be, if I'm honest. Um, they are just consistent. You know, you'll make 30, you know, 32 to 34 knots pretty regularly, but they are not speed demons. You're not going to be running things down. Um, people that wander into torpedo range and allow you to do that to them probably is because they screwed up or because they're trying to reverse away from you and you're able to just charge and run them down, okay? But you're not going to be running down a French destroyer or a French battleship or, you know, incomparable or something like that. Those things will just blow you out of the water and leave you in their dust. So you have to keep in mind that your speed is a bit of a liability, as is your concealment, and you have to manage these two things while you play the ship. Let's talk about how I build out my York, okay? 
Equipment first. Main armaments mod one. This just probably should be your default for most of the heavy cruisers. I am running Hydro. When we get to Hipper, you're going to hear me talk about why I take defensive fire on those ships. So I won't belabor the point here. York's AA is satisfactory. It's not amazing. So I have opted for the Hydro here, um, especially as maneuverable as she is. This is something else that I think really benefits her. York is incredibly maneuverable. That six and a half second rudder shift and 650 meter turning circle on her short overall length. This is an incredibly maneuverable ship. So the Hydro is really handy to allow me to dodge torpedoes. Plus it gives me that little bit of leg up. Um, there are a lot of mid-tier and uh, mid-tier destroyer players that aren't used to getting like run down between radar and hydro and so on and so forth, especially not with five and a half kilometer hydro. And so, yeah, this could come in very handy. And then I run um, that mod to give me extra duration. You see there, my hydro lasts uh, all, um, 145, almost two and a half minutes. So that's nice. Um, Aiming systems modification one is kind of my default for most heavy cruisers. Raptor, don't heavy cruisers have really good dispersion? Yeah, they do. But you're only putting shells downrange typically every 10 to 15 seconds. Some heavy cruisers have a 15 second reload. If I have to wait 15 seconds to pull the trigger on a ship this fragile, those shells better go where I aim them. And so I'm going to I'm going to maximize my ability and my um my uh, maximize my dispersion here, uh, try to get it as low as I can. So absolutely aiming systems mod one. And then the rudder shift. This is a, a little bit of a bonus here. This is it's arguable whether or not you could do this, but the struggle that I always have with heavy cruisers is what do I put in here? Right? What do I put in here? Damage control system mod is really a good one for battleships, but not great for heavy cruisers. Not great for most heavy cruisers. It's not bad. You could do worse, but it's not all, it's just not that useful. Okay. Propulsion mod, uh, maybe, but propulsion modification one only really works when you're going from zero to like the first 10 to 12 knots. So unless you're planning on stopping a whole lot, this mod is of questionable use. And most cruisers, man, the name of the game is keep moving. Even if you're moving slow, that's fine, but keep moving. Okay. So I went with steering gears and it, it, it kind of doubles down a little bit on something that York already does well. Her rudder's fairly responsive. This gives it a little more responsiveness and, and you just run with it. Okay. Her uh, aircraft slot will always be fighter. Nothing you can do about that. You're not given the option for um, a, 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 a spotter plane. Captain skills. This is also important. Okay. Um, I'm, you're going to see me take last stand on both York and Hipper. For some reason, that I cannot explain. Those two ships in particular take a lot of engine in caps. Without this skill, you will lose your engine a lot in these two ships. And you might still lose it, but the bottom line is at least this way, you'll notice it a little less because you can you can keep moving and steering and so on, okay? I highly recommend Last Stand on York and Hipper. To me, they're almost must-haves, okay? Other tier one skill I really, really, really recommend is Gun Feeder. I think I call it Feed the Guns or something like this in the in the, in the replay, but the bottom line is, this skill allows you to swap shell types very quickly. This is a huge skill for almost every heavy cruiser in the game. I'll say it here and I'll say it again later, particularly for the German and the American heavy cruisers. You will constantly find yourself switching between shell types. Sometimes you'll just have the wrong thing in for what you want to pull the trigger. This makes it quicker to shift. You want this, okay? Um, and then again, my last one pointer over here is grease the gears, make my turrets turn a little faster. Never a bad thing. 30 second turret traverse here, pretty solid. Okay, so for three points, these are really useful skills. The only two point skill I have in New York right now is focus fire training. This is one of the few places that I'll invest in her AA a little bit because mostly it gives her that little bit extra. Um, you see there, it gives her an extra AA, uh, extra F puff of flak. I'm a big fan of that. And then the extra damage out of the priority sector, which I'm going to be doing anyway. So for two points, basically, if there's planes around, I can push my button and my A is just that much more effective. And I'm a big fan of that. Okay. Um, there's a valid case to be made for priority target. I really like this skill. At the moment, I don't have it, but if you want to invest in this, feel free. This is an excellent skill for uh, for a ship like York. Another two-pointer you might want to consider is consumables enhancements. I don't have it, but this would add another 10% longer onto your hydro duration. With the hydro mod um, that I took in slot two, I mean... I don't feel like you necessarily need this, but it's never going to hurt. I would not invest in the torpedo skills on any German heavy cruiser. And then last but not least, you have Demolition Expert. Only 1% fire chance benefit here. Um, there's, I mean, you move 14 to 15, you're like, nah, I don't think this is worth it for two points. I think there's so many other things worth investing in for two points. I don't think I would take Demolition Expert. Third tier skills, Adrenaline Rush. This is like a must-have for every cruiser. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, this is basically a must-have for every ship in the game. If you have a captain skill, I mean, a captain build, and you're not playing Adrenaline Rush, I'd kind of, I would kind of look at it and go, why? Why would you not do this? This is always a good thing, okay? 
Last thing here, I took heavy AP shells. This is questionable, okay? This is a personal decision. Some of this is me messing around trying this skill out. Um, remember, the German AP is the best cruiser AP basically in the game, certainly heavy cruiser AP. The shell damage is the highest generally tier for tier for an 8-inch shell. So I've taken one of her strengths, and I'm maximized it by another 5%. So that's what you're seeing here. Is that really worth three points? Well, I feel like it is. Some of you might disagree with me, but that's how I have the ship built right now, okay? Um, I don't feel like Superintendent is a great skill for York or Hipper. Um, you won't see me take it on either one of those ships. Survivability export is not a bad one. I mean, you've got a decent armor scheme. This would be another you know, three or 4,000 hit points. That's not too shabby. So you can, if you don't want to invest in heavy AP, you'd rather take survivability expert. I, I wouldn't bat an eyelash. I think that'd be a good place to invest points. Okay. Um, I would, again, I wouldn't invest in your, in the um, uh, torpedo skill and you don't need, uh, you definitely don't want to invest in this because it makes you more detectable. That's just not a good idea. Not a good idea. Cruisers always want to be trying to play for stealth. Is almost, almost, almost always. There are a handful of exceptions, but certainly right now, maximize your stealth. To that end, concealment expert. This should always be your first default four-point skill, in my opinion. Always take concealment expert. York's AA is not worth investing anything here in, in AA defense and ASW expert, in my opinion. Um, that leaves us with radio location. Again, hunting destroyers is not what this ship is good at. I do not recommend it. Wargaming itself has blocked out IFHE. And again, you don't need it. You're a German cruiser. You already have extra penetration built into your shells. Do not invest in IFHE. Um, outnumbered, I question this skill in general. I am playing with top grade gunner. And mainly because uh, if there's a ship within 12 kilometers, I'm getting a 10% a um, excuse me, an 8% main battery reload speed. That basically takes shaves a full second off my main battery reload if I'm fighting something inside of 12 kilometers. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. I think that's useful. But again, this is me. If you don't like this skill, we've talked about some other places you can invest those points. Give that a shot. All right, let's um let's go have a look at some gameplay and then we'll come back here for a quick close. So now that we've spent some time looking at how I fit out a York and talking through the hull and the guns and everything, let's show you some gameplay. Here I am spawning into Trident. I'm top tier, which is a really comfortable feeling when you are playing a mid-tier heavy cruiser. One of the first things that I always recommend you don't do when you're playing a mid-tier cruiser, well, any cruiser really, especially a heavy cruiser, is do not start a game at full speed. Push up a little slowly, half speed, three quarter speed, whatever you kind of, whatever feels comfortable to you, but do not rush forward. Most heavy cruisers have a detection range in excess of 10 kilometers. It's very rare to find one below 10. And at that range, at those kinds of ranges, things will really, really start to get uncomfortable for you once you get focus fired in early in a match. And just, you know, unless you've got two or three destroyers in front of you, you're going to probably get spotted before they do. So sure enough, there's going to be battleship shells coming at you much sooner than you would think. Once you start to see how the enemy team is deployed, where they are, um, kind of how they've arranged themselves, initial deployments, then maybe it's time to kick on some speed. You see here, I do exactly that. I start to realize, okay, one, I want shots on this broadside light cruiser. I don't lead him quite right. One of the things about York that you have to adjust to a little bit is that her, her AP shell velocity is better than it once was, but it still is a little slow. You have to lead the AP shells a little longer uh, than you do the HE shells of memory serve. So you got to keep, got, you don't, like any other ship, it'll take some time when you play her to kind of get comfortable with the guns. But I push up here at full speed for two reasons. Like I said, I wanted the shots of the Britann, but look where the Icarus is. Now, I don't know where he's gotten to since, right? The Leningrad has unfortunately taken that spotting away from me. But I do know that if he's still hanging out behind this island, kind of like I expect him to be, I can push up here with my five and a half kilometer hydro bubble and have a whole, whole, whole lot of fun with that guy. So right now, that's the plan. There's nothing on this flank that frightens me over much. Obviously, the destroyer is not really that big a threat. The Lazo is staying back. He's pretty fragile. He's going to want to stay back. There is a Nagato on this flank. That is worth noting. His 16-inch guns can overmatch me and do mean things. And right there, the enemy McKenson pops up. Now, that angle, his, guns, his gun caliber, I'm not super concerned. 
However, my cunning plan of potentially staying behind this island is a little counteracted behind because of his hydro. His hydro has longer range than mine does. So, yeah. I'm gonna have to probably move, bail out of here eventually. The opposing carrier is Avesa, so I'm not super upset by this guy. His AP rockets are only a threat to me broadside. If I And right now, snuggled up to this island, the German rocket planes are, will really struggle to get good shots. There's the McKenzie Hydro. So now, I'm left with a bit of an unpleasant choice. I'm kind of stuck between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. I'm going to hang out here for a minute because I'm not positive what this McKenzie is going to do. I realize that I'm sitting here looking at potentially trying to, you know, make a torpedo salvo land against a hydro battleship. I know, you're all rolling your eyes at me. But he has to at least respect the threat of my torpedoes. And that's when I realize where the Icarus is. He's actually up in front of me on the far side of the cap, not behind this island torpedoes like I had thought. And so now between my hydro and, of course, I've actually got him face spotted on the surface. We're going to move up here. And, uh, well, we can all Robocop this guy, as, Zath, as, as my good buddy Lord Zath would like to say. I'm not going to get the killing blow here, but we're going to do a huge chunk of damage. And that guy is out. York is... And, in fact, most of the German heavy cruisers are really not that great at hunting destroyers. You have to keep this in mind. If you choose to play your German heavy cruiser with Hydro instead of Defensive Fire, and both are good choices, there is not a wrong one here... Um, but if you choose to play with Hydro, you, you will have to resist the temptation to go destroyer hunting too early in a game. It's maybe in the higher tier ones, you could kind of get away with it. But even then, not so much. Because the firepower at tier 10, like, you know, Rune and Hindenburg have both got heals and Eugen. But the firepower, she's, they're going to be up against some opposing battleships in that game. Those You'll be spotted all the way in trying to hunt destroyers early on. It will not end well. So, if you take Hydro in your German cruiser, your German heavy cruiser, you need to be playing for the long game. You need to be holding that Hydro early, protecting your health as best you can, potentially, you know, use it to stay alive, obviously, if there's a destroyer in the area. But mainly, you don't want to go destroyer hunting until the situation is highly advantageous for you, and that's not likely to be in the early, oh, early, game, early parts of a game. German heavies, and you'll hear me say this repeatedly over the course of all of these German heavy cruisers videos, and I'm going to keep repeating it because it is critically important. The German heavy cruiser is built for the long haul. You want to you want to spend the first half of a match protecting your health, getting chip damage where you can, because the impact you're going to have is more likely going to come the later in a game. The longer a match goes, the more likely you are to have a big impact in a game because these ships between the armor the torpedoes and the range on the main battery you have a lot of great tools to clean up low health ships late in a game but if you're dead if you died at the five or six minute mark you're not able to fulfill that role to which you are so mm, ably suited we're going to cut back to mid here Team on C has done a pretty good job. I'm going to take a few passing shots at this Lazo as we go by, but he's a cunning player. Most of those are not going to land. My thought process now is all the opposing destroyers are dead. And so now we have to transition York into a mode where she is going to go battleship hunting. The good news is, is that as a heavy cruiser, especially as a German heavy cruiser, she is well equipped to do exactly that. Her HE shells will, will routinely light fires, and battleships that disrespect your guns, and you'll see plenty of these, will find themselves eating four to six to 8,000 damage a salvo from your AP when they show you their broadsides, and you're getting full pins on their upper belt and probably more like their casemate armor. Now, I'm saying four to six to 8,000 here with, with, uh, with York, right? But as you move up the line and you get more guns... You take your Hindenburg out, some battleship shows you his broadside, you will absolutely ruin him, right? You can do nasty things at the right ranges against the right battleship. 10, 12,000 damage with a, with a salvo of AP is, is not that uncommon. It's absolutely heard of. So we're going to load the AP against the Oklahoma. I had it in the barrels. It's a solid little salvo. And what I'm really, what I'm really trying to do, and, and this is something else I, I'll recommend that you try when you play a German Heavy, try to get some fire started 
then switch to the AP when you're fighting a battleship. Because the fire is that, that constant, steady damage. Either they have to do something about it, or, you know, burn a damage control repair, which then you can go back to the HE and try for some more fires. I'm making, I'm thinking a bit of a risk here, maneuvering the way I am with this Oklahoma in front of me, but I also know his guns don't turn that quickly, and that I handle significantly better than he does. One of the advantages that York has over many of the subsequent ships in the German heavy cruiser line, she handles incredibly well. This ship has a very short overall length. Her rudder is very responsive. So you can dodge and juke and get away with things in York that Hipper and Rune and Hindenburg kind of go, oh yeah, we missed that. So I'm going to continue to pick on this Oklahoma. You see here I'm kind of swapping back and forth between the HE and the AP. Um, and we talked about it back in the ship build-out section. This is where Expert Loader really shines. I have a very hard time recommending any heavy cruiser captain build that does not have Expert Loader, or um, I guess they call it Feed the Guns now, but it's the same skill, right? You were able to change ammo type very quickly. Heavy cruisers really, really want that, especially German heavies, and American heavies if I'm honest, but German heavies for sure. So you see there, I had a, load, had a round of HE on the Gneiss. It didn't take. We swapped to the AP. This is going to be a good salvo. 4K, that's not bad. We'll swap back to the HE, see if I can get a fire. I could go straight on bow tanking this Gneiss now, but I am trying to keep my, my guns in action. At this point, the Oklahoma is getting low enough. That's the target that I'm absolutely going to try for here. Get another fire on him and some more resets. So now that he's going out and uh, my friendly Serov bags that final kill, we're going to get flipped back around and uh, and keep keep firing on this Gneiss now. Now I could go dark. I've just passed out of my detection radius. The Gneiss can't see me anymore. But as a German heavy, one of the things you're going to have to learn to do is balance your detection radius, your health, and your damage total. We're halfway through this game. I have only about 40,000 damage. It's I'm finally to the point where... Like I was saying earlier, it's the back half of the game. It's time to shine. We've got a nice, we've got a couple of ships lead. We've got to keep this, keep this uh, good nice from capping. So I'm waiting to get the another HE salvo off here. Now we're going to swap over. No, I thought I was going to swap to the AP there. Okay. Right now, basically, I'm trying to light a fire. There we go. Get him reset. We managed to pull that off. He puts that fire out. We're going to put some more HE down range. There we'll swap to the AP as the Repulse and I move back into the middle of the board. I'm going to try one more AP salvo here before I'm going to lose him behind this island. He's going to miss most of those because I'm just that maneuverable. And you see there, 5k out of the AP. So this is something that you have to learn in York, and you've got to learn it now. And there you can see the, the Feed the Guns uh, skill kicking in. You need to learn now. You're going to be switching ammo types pretty regularly. Train yourself to do it. Train yourself to be looking for opportunities to do that, depending on what you're engaging. Now, this engagement with the Atlanta is going to highlight some of the things that York struggles against. And of course, particularly light cruisers. You wouldn't think that, right? But, but York, Hipper has the same problem. We'll eat a lot of damage from an opposing light cruiser, where... If you aren't able to get your guns on target, and I'm struggling with this because the turret traverse on York is not amazing, that I'm I'm getting I'm getting AP on the target, but I'm only getting overpins. Look how quickly that guy stripped away like half of my health. Okay. So I've got a pretty respectable damage total now. We're up to 60k. We're gonna put the hydro down. I want to keep him lit. I want to know where he is. The repulse and I are gonna sandwich this guy. Repulse is gonna push him from the south. I'm gonna push him from the north. He can't escape the hydro. He's well within my hydro radius. We're always going to know where he is. The repulse does have to be frosty for the Atlantis Torps. I'm up here looking for two opportunities. One is I want to flex my AP. I've already got AP in the barrels or potentially get my torpedoes on target. What I probably should be doing is giving him more of a bow angle. You see I'm showing him a really good angle here. He's probably going to come around the corner with AP. And yep, he does. And gets there's another 5K salvo of his own. So that's a that's a that's a that's a frustrating um, misplay on my part. I probably should have come around a little more bow on, but I cannot seem to citadel this guy, and he's going to kill me, and 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 that's all there is to that. The repulse is going to move up and clean him up, but you see they're engaging different targets, right? I have to understand. Uh, it's all about knowing, you know, having a good idea what you're going to be fighting, 
swapping ammo at the right time. You know, here I have 21 reset ribbons. York, Hipper, all of the German heavies are really, really good opportunities. They're great cap defenders because you just have that constant steady pressure. They have great range with which from to defend from. And once you get to rune on up, and certainly if you're, or if you're playing like Eugen, you have a heal, which gives you longevity and makes you really irritating. So yeah, York is an exceptionally good mid-tier heavy cruiser. We are going to win this game. Um, I bailed out of it. I didn't stick around for the end, but it did turn out to be a win there. So hopefully that kind of helps you understand a little bit more about how to play York. All right, guys. Well, there you go. That is our quick spin on uh, through York, kind of how to play my thoughts on the matter. Let's have a chat in the comments. If you have any questions about this ship or the German heavy cruiser play style in general, please let me know. Uh, Hipper, Rune, and Hindenburg are coming later this week. So if you've got specific questions about those ships, I'd say save it for those videos. Let's try and keep discussion here focused on York. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Thanks for watching. Be safe. I'll catch you next time.